Welcome to chapter 8 on estimating with confidence. Uh, we're going to take a look at section 8.1 on confidence intervals, the basics, over two videos on day 1 and day 2. What we hope to cover in this section is to be, have you be able to determine the point estimate, keyword there, our point estimate and the margin of error from a confidence interval. We're going to be able to interpret a confidence interval and also interpret a confidence level. There is a difference between those two. We're going to describe how the sample size and confidence level affect the length of a confidence interval. And then explain how practical issues like non-response, under coverage, and response bias can affect the interpretation of a confidence interval. So we're going to start off with a little activity. Um, and suppose I've selected a mystery mean. I've got just a number in my head uh, that's uh, the value of the population mean. And I stored it as M in my calculator. Your task is to work together uh, as a class here uh, to estimate this value. So uh, put the following command on my calculator. Uh, we'll see a screenshot here uh, in just a second, but I also did it on uh, the... Uh, my own calculator here and you can see that's what I've done here and I've done it several times so what this means is I'm getting from a random normal distribution I've selected an M value you don't know what that is uh, I put it back on this tab right here uh, stored it as uh, as a variable this is the standard deviation and this is the sample size so you can see what I've done is I found the mean of 16. There's 16 samples taken from a random order distribution with some some mean and a standard deviation given. And these are all the different results from that. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to estimate what the mean of all of these are. Uh, so we'll go back take a look at the presentation uh, from where we left off and get back to it here. So oops, sorry, went back to the beginning. Uh, so Put this command on our calculator. You're not going to have to know how to do this. Um, and the result this one got was 240.79. You saw that I had several different answers uh, on, on my screen after doing it many times. So this just summarizes. This tells us the calculator chose a simple random sample of 16, 16 observations from a normal population with mean sum m value that's hidden to you and a standard deviation of 20. The resulting sample mean of those 16 values is 240.79. So as a group, you got to determine an interval of reasonable values for the population mean u. In other words, you've got to guess, you know, I think the true mean is somewhere between this and this. And, uh, you know, we'll do uh, a little, little res uh, comparison here as a class. So again, I'm going to go back to that calculator. And, you know, so here's uh, a... The, the mean of a, a sample of 16 from this population. Here's a mean from another 16. So another group did a group of 16 from this population and got the mean of that. Uh, so et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think probably a good a good estimate maybe might be due to just to simply take all of these values and find the mean of the means. Because uh, as they should be able to get closer and closer then uh, to our uh, true population mean over time, and especially if we did more and more of these. So that's kind of the idea. And pick up from where we left off. And if you had to give one number to estimate an unknown population parameter, what would it be? Well, if you were estimating a population mean mu, you'd probably use x bar. That just kind of makes sense. If you want to estimate the true population mean, you'd take a sample, find the mean of that, and say that's probably your best guess. If you're estimating a population proportion p, you might use p hat. So in other words, you might take uh, and find some uh, proportion, you know, do your own little sample and find uh, your own p hat, and then say hey, that's my best estimate of the true population parameter a p. Well, in both cases, you're providing a point estimate. This is a point estimate. The point estimate is your x bar or your p hat uh, on the parameter of interest. Okay. A point estimator is a statistic that provides an estimate of a population parameter. And that's what we're doing. We're using this x bar to estimate the mu. 
we were using the p hat to estimate our p. The value of that statistic from a sample is called the point estimate. The point estimator is the, is the variable we're using. The point estimate is the actual number uh, that we would get. We learned in chapter 7 that an ideal point estimate will have no bias and low variability. Again, it's not a biased estimator. Since variability is almost always present when we calculate statistics from different samples, you got to extend your thinking about estimating parameters and include an acknowledgement that repeating a sampling could yield different results. In other words, as we obviously said before, many different samples are going to get many different results. So we, we realize that in variability. So let's go back and look at that activity. So we want to know that the, the, this is what one uh, one sample of 16 came up with when they found the mean of the 16 people drawn from this population. You know, does that mean that 240.79 is exactly the mu? Well, probably not. Uh, we could be way off, but probably, you know, if I was a betting person, I'd probably say you're pretty close. So we could guess that it's somewhere around there. But the question is, how close to, 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 like how close to 240.79 is mu likely to be? Well, we want to really ask yourself this question. How would the sample mean X bar, our sample, vary if we took many of these, many of these of size 16 from the population? So again, here's our population data with a mean unknown and a standard deviation of 20. And again, we take several samples from that, like I did with my calculator screen, as we were showing. So here's, here's an example. They have, they have like three here. And again, back on uh, uh, the calculator example I showed, I had one, two, three, four, five uh, going through there. So going back, I'll take, we're going to take several samples of size 16, get those individual X bars uh, from there. And then what we can do is we can create a sampling distribution of these X bars and then the mean of these X bars, the mean of these X bars should be very close to our mu. That's our best non-biased estimator of that population mean. Uh, but now because we've also taken, uh, these are sample means, our sampling distribution, our standard deviation of our sampling distribution is that sigma divided by the square root of m. Okay. Well, to estimate the mystery mean, we can use the X bar. We can use that one value, that 240.79, that, that one group may have gotten as a point estimate. Our X bar would be our point estimator. Well, again, we don't expect mu to be exactly equal to X bar. Uh, we'd be very lucky if it was. Uh, so we need to say how to act, say how accurate we think our estimate is. You know, so we want to say, well, this is how uh, confident I am in my results. So, in repeated samples, the value of X bar follow a normal distribution with mean and standard deviation of 5. That's what we saw on the last screen, the mean of that sampling distribution, and the standard deviation of that sampling distribution. We're going to go back and look at that 68.95.99.7 rule. Again, this is within one standard deviation. This is within two standard deviations. And this one was in within three standard deviations. So, uh, looking at that rule, if I want to... Uh, uh, the, look at the 95% uh, uh, rule uh, and the empirical rule, uh, we should be within 10 uh, units of, of mu. Uh, because if I'm at the 95% rate, that's two standard deviations. Each standard deviation is 5. So 2 times 5 is 10. I should be within 10 units of that, of that mean on either side. So that's where I kind of say as X bar is within 10 points of mu, then mu is within 10 points of X bar. Okay. Therefore, the interval from X minus 10, X bar minus 10, so X bar minus 10 to X bar plus 10, will capture, that's kind of the key word here, will capture mu in about 95% of all samples of size 16. So uh, in other words, what I have is this range of values. I had my x bar minus 10 and my x bar plus 10. So the 240 minus 79 minus 10 and 240.79 plus 10. That range of values 
uh, should capture the mu in 95% of all those samples that, that we took earlier. Uh, again, going back uh, to uh, the, the screen here, or the, the calculator, I would say that 95% uh, of these uh, are within my uh, margin of error, my, you know, how much I'm allowing my, uh, to capture my value in. Okay, so, <coughs> again, uh, if we estimate that mu lies somewhere in the interval from 230.79 to 250.79, we'd be calculating an interval using a method that captures the true mu in about 95% of all possible samples of this size. So here's the big idea. The sampling distribution of X bar, so in other words, look at all the distribution of all the X bars that we took, tells us how close to mu the sample mean is likely to be. All confidence intervals we construct will have a form similar to this estimate, or similar to this. We'll have our estimate, in this case it was our X bar, and we'll have that plus or minus that margin of error. And there we had two standard deviations, uh, plus or minus, from that value. So a C percent confidence interval, or like, like we had here, 95 percent confidence interval, gives us an interval of plausible values for a parameter. So the interval is calculated from the data and has the form, like we said here, we take that point estimate. And in this case, what we've been looking at so far, point estimates either x bar or p hat. And the margin of error is going to be plus or minus, you know, so many standard deviations. So you don't know how many you want to do, depending on uh, how, how confident you want to be, but you'll have so many standard deviations above or below. The difference between the point estimate and the true parameter value will be less than the margin of error in C percent of all samples. The confidence level C, confidence level C, so uh, gives us the overall success rate of the method for calculating the confidence interval. That is, in C percent, or we can say like 95 percent of all possible samples, the method would yield an interval that captures the true parameter value. The confidence level is the overall capture rate. It's kind of a key thing there is the capture rate if the method is used many times. The sample mean will vary from sample to sample, like we saw in the calculator. But when we use the method estimate plus or minus the margin of error to get an interval based on your sample, C percent of these intervals capture the unknown mean mu. This may be a good little picture here to start describing it. So again, we got our population. We sample all the same size from there. We get all those uh, 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 intervals, you have 240.79 that somebody got, then you take minus plus or minus 10, that was just two standard deviations based off of 95%. Uh, here's somebody else's, they went plus or minus 10, somebody else's went plus or minus 10. And what we do is we got a whole big plot here of all these different people. We look at all of these, 95% of these will capture the true mean. Here's our true mean, is this value right down the center right here. And you can see that this person's here, they had a really high point estimate, and then that their margin of error was not spread off enough to capture that true mean right here. And that's going to happen. In fact, it was 95% confidence interval, that would happen about 5% of the time. So this is how we say it. This is kind of the key phrases that we want to have here. This is something you should write down in your notebook. This is uh, a template for what you have. If you're asked to interpret a confidence interval, you can use this exact same template and say to interpret a blank confidence interval. In this case, we may have had a 95% interval for an unknown parameter. You say, we are C% percent confident that the interval from blank to blank captures the actual value of whatever population parameter you're trying to estimate. If you're asked to interpret confidence levels, uh, to say that we are 95% confident in shorthand for what we say is if we take many samples of the same size from this population, about 95% of them result in an interval that captures the actual parameter value. The confidence level tells us how likely it is that the method we are using will produce an interval that captures the population parameter if we use it many times. The confidence level does not, does not tell us the chance that, that it the chance, it does not tell us the chance that a particular confidence interval captures the population parameter. It either does or it doesn't. Instead, the confidence interval gives us a set of plausible values for the parameter. We interpret confidence levels and confidence intervals in much the same way we are estimating a population mean proportion or some other parameter.